Bennett and Johnson Insurance Agency in Alma is your local independent auto owners insurance agency. Welcome to this edition of the Red Raider Coaches Show. My name is Brent Johnson, along with head football coach Keith Goss. Coach, how you doing? Doing all right. Doing just okay? Doing, doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, coach, um, well, welcome back again to this edition. I want to uh, talk real quickly uh, about some sponsors that we want to recognize, uh, some of our big, big boy sponsors is what I'll call them. Uh, we're, we're recognizing uh, two each week because there's just so many. Uh, we want to make sure we give each one uh, their due recognition and don't want to water it down any at all. Uh, but we want to recognize uh, first uh, Carver Drug Company and Gifts. Um, kind of near and dear to me because I went to school with this guy, Phil Carver. He was a, a year ahead of me um, and he was a football player. He was a quarterback uh, for the Red Raiders I know for two years. I've seen some pictures. I've seen some throwback pictures. Of yeah, yeah. He was a, he was a lefty uh, we had uh, for us and uh, did a good job. He was a great pitcher on the mound as well. And he's one of those, those hometown guys that he goes off to college and he comes back and he works in his hometown and, and supports his hometown by, um, with his monetary gifts as well as his uh, physical support uh, on certain things. So we're, we're, we're glad Phil has jumped on board. Uh, Definitely appreciate it uh, with, with, uh, with what he's trying to do there. Also, we want to mention another long-time, long-standing uh, business in our community, and that's FMB South. Uh, Mr. Zach Johnson and his staff there uh, do a great job uh, in our community of supporting, uh, again, uh, not only uh, high school athletics, but uh, all the way up uh, from the rec league, you know, uh, middle school, and so on and so forth. So, again, I want to thank uh, FMB South, again, for their support of Red Raider Booster, which, again, uh, that money's... Um, and that time and effort goes directly into the football program. So again, we want to take the time to thank those. Coach, about the sponsors for the meal last Friday. Um, the pregame meal was sponsored by uh, Pine Level, Pine Level Church, yes. and uh, it was it was done by uh, Boat Rights. Uh, pretty good meal, as always. Uh, formerly so, Sarah's. If formerly you're, Sarah's. If you're not uh, used to the name change, but yeah, it was formerly Sarah's. Um, so it's. Uh, you know, we really appreciate the church doing that. Uh, obviously, you know, having different churches in this community step up and, and help feed our kids is, is always a big help, and we, it's definitely appreciated. Well, again, that's part of building a program is, is making sure these guys have proper nutrition as best as possible because we know when they go home we can't control that, uh, but we can during the school day and also providing, I know you all got a fridge, down there in the uh, conference room. Tell us yeah. a little bit about it. Yeah. That you know, we just we make sure that we keep uh, chocolate milk in there uh, for for post workout, and uh, we have peanut butter jelly sandwiches made every day. Uh, that's just to, to make sure that they're they're getting enough calories when you when you're going and you're uh, going to lift weights and then turn around and practicing on the field. And uh, we're just trying to make sure their body has enough to grow. Well, that takes a lot out of it. it takes a it takes a lot of calories. All right, so let's shift to uh, to the, the the last game we played, where uh, you know we hosted a pretty solid team. But before we get to the uh, to the game itself, it was it was something a little different in the southern eastern corner of the football field. Yeah, it's it's been uh, it's it's been quite an ordeal to get that thing done and, and up in time. But uh, you know we're we're very proud of the jumbotron. Uh, down in the, in the corner of the end zone. Uh, obviously, there's there's going to be a ton that, that we're going to be able to do with that over time. Uh, we're still learning all the, the bells and whistles, um, but it's something exciting um, beyond football. Um, 
you know, soccer we use it as well, graduation. Uh, that would be something nice where I, mean, I think you'll have the ability to, to live stream straight to the board so every, you know, everybody can see their child's face going across the, the Jumbotron. So there's, there's a bunch of neat things, uh, even probably different clubs and stuff can do with the board. Yeah. Um, and different events that can be held out there now because of that. And so I, I think there's a lot of things that, that it's going to be used for uh, in time yeah. that will be uh, all you know, creative and fun things for the community. Well, first thing comes to mind to me is Georgia Florida game. You know, I think start we can it up throw there. it up there and have some lawn chairs and that sort of thing. Now, I'm not sure we can do that legally, uh, but uh, the fact you mentioned some bells and whistles. Um, matter of fact, this week I've been busy uh, checking out some of those bells and whistles, and I've uh, discovered it, it's pretty easy to, to throw a live feed up. Um, matter of fact, you know, we saw some some a pre video made, uh, and, and we'll mention the Wall of Fame. Uh, induct induction ceremony in just a moment, but you saw the video that was played up there. That was uh, created in advance and uh, played on demand. Uh, but we are able to shoot some things live or anything we want really live through a camera. And you'll see that example uh, tomorrow night during homecoming. We're going to project what's going on on the field up on the big board so that uh, there won't be a, a bad seat in the house. Um, and as he mentioned. Uh, other events, not, it's not just about football, it's again soccer season, boys and girls, middle school, um, uh, those types of things, uh, all those events, graduation, there won't be a bad seat in the house again, uh, we'll be able to project the, uh, the camera image um, up there as well, um, and it is pretty exciting. I, I think, you know, I, I think a lot of people, let's just address the pink, the elephant in the room, if it's pink or blue or whatever, but you know, like, man, guys, a, what does a school our size need something like that? You know, I'm sure there's been questions like that um, posed. Uh, I want to thank those that, that really got involved uh, to to raise the money for that that thing. Um, right, and, and to that, was, that wasn't a school system. No, that's right. Uh, uh, funded thing. That was a booster club funded. That's thing. correct. Uh, and we had several members of our booster club go out and and get companies to donate to that. Um, so that's not something that, you know, our school system, you know, did help some. Yes. Um, but it was a, a smaller portion, and a lot of that money was raised outside the means of what comes, you know, in our school system budget. So, yes. Um, almost all of it, basically. Almost all yeah, of it. Yeah. And so, um, you know, if, if the money's raised and it's something that's going to produce pride in our county, yeah. um, why wouldn't we do that? Yeah. Well, it's really cool, and we're going to try our best to take advantage of it. Um, you know, using uh, talents of my students and uh, Mr. Uh, Reed Briquette, who is a new faculty member, former student, former football player uh, at Bacon County High School, um, who is teaching business uh, marketing uh, for us uh, this year. He's going to uh, utilize his talents as well to help produce and create some uh, some cool things for the board for the, the for the people to enjoy uh, in the stands. So again, the, the sky's the limit with, with this thing. Um, and again, I think if we utilize it uh, how we anticipate, um, I think those, those folks maybe have potentially have questioned why. They'll say, man, that, that, is, that is pretty cool, because yeah. it, it, it really will be. And, and speaking of that, we'll kind of talk just a moment about the, uh, the Wall of Fame. A lot of work and a lot of effort um, behind that. Right. That's a, that's a, because that's a year's process. It, what is, I understand. it is a year's process. Um, I mean, the committee is already probably looking now to meet to start preparing right. for next year. And they and they generally look to pull, you know, uh, somebody from, from each decade, uh, starting from the 50s up. Mm -hmm. And right now, I think that stops around 2000, mm -hmm. uh, the 2000s group. Uh, so nobody from 2010 and above, or 2009 Just, or 10, yeah. Would, would be in yet, even if they've done some uh, incredible things. Yeah. Uh, once we feel like we've we've gone through and exhausted the last age group, we'll, we'll shift it up 10 years. Ten years. Um, but there's, you know, there's a, a ton of good coming from that and, and getting, you know, people back involved in the program and, and people, uh, you know, we have plenty of guys that need to be recognized mm -hmm. for their contributions to this, this program uh, over the decades. So I think it's just a, a wonderful thing and, and uh, it's pretty neat when uh, I think two of the guys up there had had their sons play yeah. and, and that's, those are special moments. Certainly. Maybe the most, you know, 
of, of the whole thing that was probably the most special moment of not taking anything away from the rest of the guys though some of the older gentlemen that were represented from the 50s and 60s and 70s or 60s I should say but uh, Stefan Dean being one and Rashid Slade their sons uh, had just been on the field playing uh, right. and they were out in uniform with them so uh, that was a, a neat thing to see uh, neat for the other players uh, to see uh, as well and uh, again moving forward I, I think this is a good thing and and, and, and this could possibly carry over. I know there's been some, some questions asked and uh, talked about in some other sports, you know, in, in Bacon County Which, School District. You know, there's, there's been some, some great programs, I mean, and, and great teams that, you know, I think it'd be great if, they're, if their booster club, booster club programs picked up and did some of those things. I mean, we have, I think, a, a state champion uh, you know, baseball team. We have a state champion um, basketball team, boys, boys and, and girls. And girls. Um, so obviously, there's there's some some people that deserve recognition yeah. uh, in those programs. It's just uh, setting those things up and and, and building yeah. their own you know wall of fame. Yeah. All right. So let's uh, we'll shift gears to uh, to some football, some X's and O's. Right. Uh, so uh, you know, tell us a little bit about. Uh, you know the game plan going into, um, you know, coach. We're it's just like we've uh, it's a sore subject when you talk about missing some kids and right. kids getting hurt and we're getting some kids back that aren't a hundred percent because of the time they've missed. Um, it, we just can't quite, you know, we, we're just we it hasn't have, all come together. Haven't all come together, and, and that's that's just the reality. Um, we're working hard uh, to get kids healthy and. and Get kids up to speed, um, but it's hard to when when you're missing groups of kids or kids are out for COVID. It's hard to move things forward forward offensively and defensively when you're reteaching the same stuff every week. And so that's that's been a challenge where you know we've had to do a lot of reteaching just because if I'm missing this kid for a week, great he comes back. Now I'm missing this kid for a week. Now he comes back. I spent a week catching him up, teaching him. Now we catching him up, teaching him, uh, and and so you know those are some of the challenges uh, we're facing. I, I think um, just with the kids that we had out with with COVID and everything else, I, I do think we were hit harder in some other programs. Um, but that is what it is. Yeah. We don't control those things. Well, I see a good problem um, as I'm in the booth and. And I'm the radio guys are beside me, and they're calling names out, and and I'm helping with that a little bit. And uh, a good problem is we got a bunch of young kids that's that's helping our program right now. That's, oh yeah, there's there's a ton of guys that have gotten on the field uh, and gotten an opportunity, and they've been doing stuff with their opportunities. Guys that, that may not have have been on the radar to play as much because of the situations we've been through, uh, they've been getting on the field, and and they've decided they want to stay there. Uh, so when they've worked hard enough to earn that spot, and uh, so that is, you know, you know, not what we expected. Yeah. Um, but but that's what we're doing. I mean, that's what we're we're going through. We, uh, you know, I looked on the field the other night, and we're playing, you know, four and five freshmen on the field right now, and you know, four or five sophomores on defense, and uh, the defense is very young. Yes. Um, so. Maybe not what we expected, uh, but that's where we're at. We're going to continue to work and get better. Um, you know, the, the frustrations in game against Brantley County, um, you know, we didn't start fast enough. We didn't start fast enough offensively. We didn't start fast enough defensively. And those are things we've addressed this week. Uh, we're going to continue to work to get better. Um, the second half, I feel like we, we played a much better football game. We did. Uh, we just got ourselves in a hole that, that we couldn't get out of. Um, but I say all that to say this. We're preparing for region time. Yes. And, yeah, we've had every curveball thrown at us in, in this first part of the season that you could imagine. Um, with that being said, i got kids showing up to work to get better. Yeah. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to show up to practice. We're going to work. We're going to get better. We're going to prepare to get into the state playoffs. And so that's our mindset. That's what we plan to do. Um, you know, plenty of naysayers out there that want to talk. That's fine. 
uh, we're going to keep working. And that's the only way I know how to be. Well, that's the only thing you, you know, that's what you only thing you can ask of your kids. Uh, we've got a couple uh, players uh, listening on the uh, on the show today, and, and I look at them, and I, I see them on the field, and, and I know they're working hard, these two guys. And, um, and again, that's all you can ask is for guys to show up every day in the weight room. That's where it starts. In the, and then the weight room on the practice field. Uh, practice field and film and, and, and this and that and the other. So, um, you know, the other night, I, I, matter of fact, on Monday, I, uh, I teach our quarterback, and I said, man, I said, gosh, we've had some bad luck with some of those pick sixes. You know, he had a, a guy hit his, hit his arm this last time, kind of that dead duck. And yeah. always, the dead duck always goes to the defender. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> always. He you does know? seem that way. And, and, he, and he scored, you know, we just – and. and we were just just a player to a way of, of of winning the game, you know. And but that you know, even when I talked to my offensive linemen, uh, you know, we that was we didn't have many protection fails, but that was one of them. Yeah. And when and I don't care who you are, you're getting hit when you release the ball. Um, it's not going to turn out well. Yeah. Tell us a little bit, and we'll move on. Um, because it took us a while. Some of the numbers had changed up, and 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 that's my fault. I I did not. Uh, Redownload and print off. I'm sure you up, updated it on your I did. your roster. Well, there's oh, there so many things. You know, I updated on max preps. I updated on the huddle. Right. I updated in my roster. So and and I had several kids that that you know asked if they'd be moved to a different number. And at first, I'm kind of like, it's the middle of the season. Yeah, it's a little bit of a headache. And I was like, you know yeah. what? These are the kids that are working and want to be here. Yeah. And uh, sure. Uh, yeah. And at first, you know, I was kind of like. I don't want to do that. And then, you know, I was kind of like, you know what? They're here, they're working. Uh, I'm absolutely, yeah, I need to do that. And so, um, so some of them want to change around numbers. One of them sitting in this room. Now he wants to change back to his other number, uh, which, you know, me and him still going to have to have a talk about. Um, but, yeah. Well, the number I was going to ask you about, and, and he kind of come in and gave us a spark. And everybody's like, who is this kid? It took us, it actually took your wife. She was up in the very top row. She had to walk all the way down to the bottom of the field to ask somebody who he was. Number two, that was Richardson. Is that mm -hmm. correct? Uh, he come and give us a little spark uh, at, at running back. Yeah, uh, you know he's one of our freshmen, and um, you know he's doing a good job. Um, still got like all my freshmen <laughs> still have growing up to do. Right. Uh, but no, is he a good football player? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know he'll he'll continue to grow yeah. uh, as a player. Yeah. Well, that was that was good to see, and and. Uh, I was going to mention a moment ago when you were talking about defense, um, and and I know we don't like to. Once in a while, we'll call out names and and, and that sort of thing. Um, but uh, the two brothers, the two Brown brothers, mm -hmm. they're doing a pretty good job on defense. They're getting it. They're uh, starting to get it. Freshman and a sophomore. Freshman and a sophomore. And the freshman had the had the had the interception. He uh, did. That kind of got us that again another mm -hmm. give us an opportunity there. Right. Um, great play. Um, yeah, no, he broke on the ball. He was he got to his zone, dropped on it, cut underneath it. It's great, great play. Um, and, and those guys, they're you know, they're freshmen and a sophomore, yeah. but they're they're on the field and they're and they're playing hard and they're getting to where they're supposed to be. Um, so it's it's a it's a growth process. All right, coach, we're gonna you know put it behind us uh, like we do try to do every week. Um, and we're looking forward to tomorrow night. Um, and on top of it, and we haven't mentioned, we'll, we'll talk just briefly about homecoming. This is homecoming week. Homecoming. A, a, a coach's worst nightmare. <laughs> um, I think football wished that we'd move homecoming to baseball season. Uh, sometimes this can be a, a big distraction for the kids and the coaches and, and everything. But it, it, it really is a time to celebrate. Um, I enjoy homecoming week because uh, I remember how it was uh, when, when I was in school. A lot of pride and um, and took advantage of the, of the things that uh, we were able to, to do uh, during the week, the dress up and the working on the floats and that sort of thing. We had the parade yesterday that was a success, and um, we'll have a pep rally uh, tomorrow. That's going to fire everybody up. Our pep rally this uh, this year will be at the football field, and matter of fact, that's where we get the first taste of some some live footage some on, the live footage on the scoreboard. Um, so, uh, so we'll be on the football field, spreading the kids out a little bit in the stands um, and doing that sort of thing. Um, but we'll be uh, hosting Tattano County. Uh, this will be our last non-region game. Non-region game. And uh, we, went, we went over there last year and 
Uh, I'm not sure we'll renew our contract with them over the course of the next couple of years, but we, you know, I, they got a, a pretty nice facility. They just don't have any internet access, yeah. and I can't I can't broadcast from there. Now we recorded and and uploaded it later, but I mean you can't even hardly send a text, much no, less anything. It's, so their school is right in between uh, the the two it's cities. It's dead zone. It used I mean, to be literally. It used to be a, two smaller schools, um, and uh, they built a school right in between the two towns. Yeah, and there's nothing else out there. Nothing, nothing. Just some trees and a stadium. And uh, the schools there, but there's no, no contact with the outside world. <laughs> but uh, but they're coming to our our place uh, right. tomorrow night. And uh, coach, what do you see? We we talked briefly off camera. Ask you a couple questions, and um, just by I haven't looked any film other than last year's. Just by the score of them and Jeff Davis, lets me know that they've improved. Uh, they're they're a much improved team. Um, they're they're shotgun wing T. Uh, their quarterback is is elusive. Um, you know they they're going to present some some you know problems with with the way they run their wing T. Uh, their spread look, um, but uh, we feel like we have a sound game plan to take away the things they do best. Um, as far as you know, defensively, they have two defensive ends that are, um, you know, long-bodied guys. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've we've had to plan around them. Uh, one of them, I think, is six foot five, six foot six. Um, so we've done things to to account for that. Uh, but no, we're you know, we're excited to get them here and, and, and play. What have we made any particular adjustments or changes to? You know, like defensively, you know, again, we're, we we lost one of our seniors last year, or excuse me, last week. We uh, did. Uh, to, a, to a knee injury, um, and unfortunately it looks like he won't be able to return this season, so that's another uh, player we'll have to, you know, replace some next man up. Right. Um, and uh, as far as. No, we, we, we've had, um, you know, we, we've lost, you know, arguably one of our, our arguably our best D linemen uh, to a knee injury. And, you know, why that's tough to replace. Uh, we are going to prepare the next guy and, and, and get rolling. Um, you know, scheme-wise, we've made adjustments according to, to who we, we're playing. Um, you know, it's good to have my, my defensive coordinator back. Uh, you know, he was sick for the early part of the season. Um, I do think I'll get Coach McKenzie back finally. Um, you know, knew he was going to either try to show up to school today not that he's ready for the practice field yet, right. um, but um, I think he's you know was going to to actually try to come and come into work today for the first time in in over a month. So um, you know we're preparing, we're we're doing you know what we need to, and, and um, but yeah we've we've got something schemed up that we think will will help slow him down. Well, good, and that's on the defensive side of the ball, and offensively. Um, you know that the the two quarterback system. You know, obviously, I think Riker's getting probably 60, 70 percent of the snaps, um, but uh, our other quarterback presents a problem uh, for for the opposing defenses. Well, anytime you have two kids with two different skill sets, and that's that's the point of it. Um, when you have two kids that you can put work back there, and they have two different skill sets, um, and both of them can fun function running the offense. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's just twice as much as the defense has to prepare for. Yeah. And so um, I don't think till last week we had let, you know, Cozy throw but one or two. Uh, but he threw a good one uh, early in the game, and, you know, we do have some things packaged for him to throw the ball. Yeah, and that's only, I knew it was probably only a matter of time. Yeah. Because uh, when he comes in, 90% of the time, he's going to run or he's going to hand off. Um, but we're going to pop one. Uh, yeah, he's gonna have a chance to make a big play. Maybe toss it over to Antoine. Uh, he'll be wide open somewhere. I promise you. <laughs> well, and that's the thing when when we bring him in in that package, uh, it's going to make it. They're going to try to bring more in the slot. Mm -hmm. You know, just stop box, with the yeah. run. So they're gonna bring more in the box, and so you know, packaging some things up that, that he's comfortable throwing um, is really. Um, you know, kind of let our receivers take advantage of stuff uh, when those opportunities happen. Well, he's fun to watch, uh, to come in, because he is elusive. Uh, uh, he, did, he, he runs real well. He's not scared to contact. Not at all. Uh, not at all. You know, and then we see uh, Tomlin, 
who, uh, to me, he made some throws uh, last week that were pretty nifty. I mean, he's he's got a, I don't know if you call it a cannon, but he, he can zip it. That, that 15 to 20 yard range, he, he's, it, it's he, flat. He throws a good ball. Uh, um, and on occasion, Antoine will go get it. Yeah, um, but <laughs> um, no, I mean he 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 throws he throws a good ball, and we got some receivers there that are capable of going to get it, and so um, you know it's just a matter of keeping them protected and uh, giving them opportunities downfield to get open. Yeah, we saw a, sort of a fifty-fifty ball, if you want to call that, and, and um, Guinea is here with us uh, during the recording, and. Uh, Antoine Fuller, and you know he made a fantastic catch. Uh, matter, of, matter of fact, he was he was being held and pulled and tugged. It was a pass interference, but he just come up with a great a great catch and uh, great concentration. Yes, uh, for that for that touchdown to, to keep us in that game. And so, uh, well, coach, uh, we look forward to a, a, a you know a good homecoming game. We want the crowd to come out as always for homecoming and support uh, the court. Uh, the festivities will begin at 7 p.m. again and. Uh, we'll be introducing at least uh, for uh, the community um, the, the live uh, feed capability of our Jumbotron as we uh, will project uh, some of the things that are going on uh, at homecoming festivity as well as throughout the game, um, the gameplay. So that's, that's exciting. So we encourage you to do come out and support uh, Raider Nation tomorrow night. But if you can, as always, we'll be broadcasting live on the NFHS Net Network powered by Play on Sports. And brought to you by us, BCTV Red Raider Broadcasting. Uh, so, Coach, uh, on behalf of, of myself and, and him, we want to uh, thank you for joining us on uh, this week's edition of the Red Raider Coaches Show. Bennett & Johnson Insurance Agency in Alma is your local independent auto owner's insurance agency.